Well, I should do some other story first, though. Maybe okay. just some rando online one. Rando? Should I stop it then? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we no, are this, is, this is a part of the a podcast now. Oh, we talk about things. Yeah. This is, you know. Do people. we have to introduce ourselves? Is anyone going to listen? Hi, my name is Margaret. <laughs> my name is Anna. Mm-hmm. We're going to be reading you scary stories. Because why not? We have nothing else to do. Oh, sorry. I was watching Adventure Time like a little bitch. <laughs> I just watched Nacho Libre. It's like the best movie ever. Have you seen it? No, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Okay, it's I'll take your Jack word Black for it. it. Oh my god. Anything that has Jack Black in it is amazing. He's like young Jack Black. Oh. He's got like a big belly but it's a little bit attractive <laughs> there is just it's it's just a quality that jack black has is being weirdly attractive mm. weirdly or uh invitingly what <laughs> like it's not weird that you're attracted to him you know why you're attracted to him you invite the attractive the attractivity okay <laughs> socrates so crates quote Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. <sighs> okay. Um where do we find? And there are so many different kinds of horror stories that are not what I'm looking for. <laughs> what are you looking for? I don't know, just something random from the, the interwebs. Something that will curdle my blood, perhaps? It will something that will corn. chill my bones <laughs> send a shiver down my spine <laughs> your scoliosis body's spine. aching all the time <laughs> my scoliosis spine if if okay if it were to send a shiver down my spine the shiver would have to take an s-shaped root to go down my spine <laughs> <laughs> that's the s s stands for shiver obviously nah man the s stands for scoliosis <laughs> Oh, is that what scoliosis is named after? The yeah, shape it makes? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's just a big Perfect. cursive word, scoliosis. Oh my back. god. Oh my god, if you drew an anatomy skull person. A skeleton. A skeleton. Uh-huh. But made their spine a cursive word for scoliosis. Oh my god, it would be like those poems we had to write in like the fourth grade where they would be the sh- you would write the poem about something, but it would be the shape of the thing you're writing. Oh like it about. a leaf about fall? Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but it would just be my spine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I would not like to rearrange the anatomy of my body. How come? Um, because it's already funky enough. Here we have horrorstoriesonline.com. Ooh, sounds promising. Ooh, and it's by old people like Charles Dickens and Mark Twain. And... What? Yeah. Interesting. That's some basic stuff. <laughs> Basic. Oh, Woman in Black 2012. That's a movie, not a horror story. <laughs> Anything's a horror story. Okay, horror. Just look history? at my German class. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, why is that a. <laughs> huh? Why is that a horror story? <laughs> because it horrifies me every time I go there and he stares at me with his unwavering gaze and asks me a question in German and I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> And then I have to say, ich weiß nicht, because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> ich habe keine Idee. I don't know what's going on. It's scary. If you're an asshole English teacher... <laughs> Which I will be in the future, obviously. Well, then why don't you know this? Because I'm stupid. <laughs> and I don't want to actually be an English teacher. Maybe a creative writing teacher I could steal my... Isn't that also English? Not really. It's a different branch. Because that... I don't have to, like, teach kids how to write essays. I can just be like, write me a short story in which your soul is a leaf and someone is stepping on it. <laughs> okay, but but in order to be a creative writing teacher, you'd have to be an English teacher also because they're not going to hire you just to teach one class. Don't crush my dreams like that. Oh, well, Read the story. <laughs> I have always noticed a prevalent want of courage 
even among Wait, persons <laughs> of superior intelligence and culture, as to imparting their own physiological. This is boring. It is boring. What the hell is courage? <laughs> courage. Oh, I was like, Wait, is that some kind of porridge? <laughs> Curry porridge. They what? have it in India. What? What's wrong with you? The scary story dot com. Here we go. Please stop. <laughs> Lake Lopez. Uh, underscore. I want to scare the hell out of you. Please do. <laughs> okay. This one is called. The naughty ones. Oh. And if you guys can't hear it, I winked when I said that. Because <laughs> that is such oh, an Oh shit, my moment. computer keeps disconnecting from the internet. This is what I get for my $12,000 education. The naughty ones. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> the elves take children from their parents and plunk <laughs> them down plunk? on Santa's lap. Oh shit. I take their picture. Most times, the kids... Oh, and by the way, because I don't want to be, like, politically incorrect, uh, copyright 2010 by Lake Lopez, all rights reserved, disclaimer, this is a work of fiction, all of the characters, places, events are portrayed in this work are products of the author's imagination, and any resemblance to people living or dead is purely coincidental. You heard it here, folks. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Most time, the kids flash gap-toothed smiles. Other times, little Johnny or Susie cries. Hmm. Every Big once in bitch. a while, some kid has a total meltdown. Me, that's me. I'm talking complete nervous breakdown. The kind where your snot goes flying and the hysterics are shrill enough to pierce eardrums. Speaking of which, I want to get my ears pierced, but I'm not sure when. Uh, do it right now. But you <laughs> I have a theory about those whalers. They're going to be the naughty ones. And they know that when they grow up, Santa will be very unhappy with them. She just made the sign of the cross. I'm a Catholic. <laughs> Not really. Smile. The girl grins from her perch on Santa's lap. And I click the camera shutter button. Good job. Well, Santa's helpers, college kids in green and red costumes, <laughs> don't at me like that. <laughs> Replace the girl with the boy. I type the customer's order number, 070144, under the picture and hit the send button. The parents will buy a copy, or 20, and after doing this 3,000 or so times, the night will be over. When the hell am I going to get scared? Because right now I'm bored. All I want to do is get back to my brother's couch and fall asleep in front of his fireplace. (laughs) Moocher. (laughs) Santa let up his both ho 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 and what do you want for Christmas, little boy? I hate this job. The noise of it. The deep, fake Santa bellows hurts me. The din of the children, their high-pitched, giddy with greed voices works its way into my head like a sharp icicle expanding into the cold. Damn, this bitch is bitter. (laughs) I adjust my camera, framing the picture, and tell the boy, smile. He's three, maybe, and stares blank-faced at the camera. The other Santa photographers might try to coax a little green out of him, but I didn't give a piece of a reindeer shit about it. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Oh, my. Seasonal. Seasonal. And that was very seasonal. I applaud that. The line of parents... (laughs) The line of parents... And children wraps through the mall lobby into the <laughs> West Wing. I can't see the end of it. The night will never end. Uh-huh. Click. Good job. I title the picture zero seven one. I use <laughs> the photograph the models. That's how I met my wife. What? <laughs> she wore a swimsuit the size of two iPods. <laughs> wait, this, wait, what? I used to photograph models. That's how I met my wife. <laughs> she wore a swimsuit the size of two iPods. Okay, okay, okay. 
why are we suddenly not at the at the Santa? And why, why would are you we using iPods? Why as a would metric, you use iPods as a as a metric of? I was gonna say distance. <laughs> You know what I mean. Yeah, why would you use iPods as a measurement of size? That's not relevant and it makes why no not sense. IPhones? IPhones iPods are dead. Well, this was written in two thousand twelve. You remembered that? <laughs> yes, 2010. surprisingly. Two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Ah shit. And sand on her legs. I fell in love with her big eyes and pointy eyebrows. <laughs> I thought he was just going to say big boobs, like, straight up. I mean, that too. Wait, she pointy had a... eyebrows? <laughs> Stab a bitch with those eyebrows. She had a rough laugh. Like, she was hungry for joy. What? Are you sure she isn't Santa Claus? <laughs> and she dropped the brooding, sultry, model-like act. The second I shut down the cameras. This bitch out here so. like, ho, ho, ho. What do you want for Christmas? <laughs> H-O-E. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Who wouldn't love a warm-hearted girl like that? <laughs> Another boy takes his place on Santa. <laughs> Wait, what? He's about seven. His father stands nearby and he looks like he's dying of cancer. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck is this story? God's faced and shallow an eddie bauer coat hangs lopsided on his shoulders eddie bauer Bar. <laughs> he is styling even if he is maybe dying it fit him when he was well before he, the disease started eating him how do you know he has a out. disease maybe he's just a horror creature he looks familiar to me oh smile i say forcing my lips upward <laughs> interesting <laughs> He does. Click, and then I label the picture, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm framing the next shot. I realize that who he is and why I didn't recognize him. He lost 80 pounds in prison. (laughs) What? (laughs) At least I have that. I think to turn and watch him walk around the purchase table, one hand on the boy's back. At least I can see the year he served manslaughter was hard on him. (laughs) He's, the year he served for manslaughter was hard on him. What, what, the fuck? what is the exposition of the story? <laughs> the sick looking man and the boy is the fat guy who ran his BMW over his wife. My wife. My wife? My wife? My wife? My wife? What? Upon impact, my lovely girl was caught between his car and the asphalt. Ass. Ass. <laughs> he ground. He ground her into a bloody smear Jesus three Christ. feet wide. After three feet fit. wide. He got out his rule. Three iPod wide. Three, three iPods, iPods wide. wide. <laughs> After a bit, he stopped and backed up. Then he drove around her body, easing his sedan into traffic. Oh, I thought he was going to run her over again because this story It'd is be a fucked bit like that. Overkill, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the bag of broken bones that had once been my wife behind him. Bang. Forgotten rogue kill. But she's in a body bag already? Damn, they were No, fast. it's called skin. It's the largest organ on your body. If it's called skin, bag why did he bones? call it a bag? It's it's called literature. Man wants to be Stephen King so bad. <laughs> this year. Hey, it's a woman. Oh, my bad. Actually, I don't know. Their first name's Lake, so. So. I don't know if that's a woman or a man. It's obviously a body of water. So this year, I don't blame those kids, the whalers, for being scared. Santa's a real I gem do. when you're good and when you believe in him, miracles happen. Of course, <laughs> it's hard to believe in something that's not real. Is this a we Christmas story or a horror story? <laughs> or it's just a dumb story. We grow up, we learn the truth, and we forget. It's okay with Santa. He couldn't take gifts for all of the good go- girls and boys and cover the grown-ups, too. The fact the people forget is the only thing keeping Santa's operation afloat. The thing is, though, Santa doesn't forget. <laughs> is Santa <laughs> the, the villain in the story? He keeps those lists updated. Both of them. Oh my god, Santa's the villain in the story. Oh my god. <laughs> Last year. Uh. Not a creature was stirring, I thought. Ha ha ha. I stretched out on my brother's couch, where I've been living in this December. 
I don't have my own place anymore. Obviously not. Everything I had died in a parking lot, so my family. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know what that meant at first. Oh my god. Fam, your whole house, your wife was your house too? You oh. Two iPods worth of house right there. Oh my god. Oh. Just two iPods worth of real estate just fucking hit by a car. Kachoo! Kachow! I wish I was an alcoholic. <laughs> what the fuck? Then I could slip into a whiskey coma every night. Okay, I you don't drink. have to be an alcoholic to do that. That's how you become an alcoholic. So really nothing's stopping I could drink until my you. liver looked like a cracked sponge and die. Cracked sponge. Instead, I get the quiet. Tonight, the silence is broken. The noise starts on the rooftop. Oh my god, it's the reindeer. The reindeer are gonna kill him. A long banging like cars slowly crashing. It startles me so bad I bolt straight up on the couch. Cars slowly crashing? This is like when that old lady hit me in the Target parking lot. God damn. (laughs) My brother remains asleep, I guess because he doesn't charge down the stairs. I head towards the windows to see... The hardwood floor, like ice against my bare feet, and open the curtains. I see a few parked cars, <laughs> snow covered yards. That's all. Wow. Then I hear sounds like pieces of sandpaper being rubbed against bricks. <laughs> so the, the reindeer are just sanding his roof. <laughs> and they got it slick for the old man to pass through. <laughs> I spin around. The creature lands in the fire. What creature? Enough light enters the room for me to see the black cloud of soot rise under his feet. He ducks down and seeps, steps out of the fireplace. It's just Danny DeVito as Santa Claus. He, it, is two feet tall. (laughs) Me. And dresses like one of Santa's helpers. Dude, you could step on him. If he's a threat to you, he's step like, on he's him. He's like four iPods. Oh, four she, iPods. She, he four iPods tall. Oh, <laughs> but God. instead of green and red, his pointy boots and tights and top jacket were all black as a motor oil. So he's just in a biker gang. Maybe he's just one of those store people who are like, you know, in theater tech or something. <laughs> His oil, I mean, his, his face <laughs> seems smashed, what? like he ran into a wall. No, he just... But what freaks me out the most is his eyes. I was going to make a really bad joke. Two pinpoints of yellow glaring at me. Okay. No, not God, he says. What? Because he says, oh God, or oh. And then I scream this year. Ah! About those grown-ups who make the naughty list... They really can't help it. There's something wrong with them and their genetics, I suppose, and whatever the flaw is, it's strengthened by what upbringing, by upbringing. So the world is stuck with adults who do bad things and who live without remorse even though they crave the taste of blood, even when they crave the taste of blood. On some level, though, they all know they're being bad. They know they could do better if they worked at it because they won't know they deserve to be punished. I don't care about this. Just get to the part where the the little elf man, Jesus. like, bites his ankle or something. <laughs> There's, like, a big bolt into section. Oh, my. Last year. We, wa- we talked a long time. I thought the creature's voice would be grated and scary, but his tone was soothing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> his voice, his words, all comfort and rationale. He explained everything. Santa, his list. His naughty and nice list. He told me the difference between the punished and the free. I don't care. And bold. The unrepentant, the little Troy, troll, <laughs> Troy. are everywhere. One of them lives right here. <laughs> he handed me a piece of paper. Customer order, blank, blank, blah, blah, blah. Customer For... order. <gasps> it's like a picture. It's like his job. For a second, I wondered how he got it, and then I realized that I was taking, talking to a two-foot-tall elf dressed in black with yellow eyes of a predatory, predatory, <laughs> so that's it, and I, I stopped <laughs> wondering about the trivial, so just a dumb sentence, yeah, okay, I don't, wait, the naughty one takes this little boy to sit on Santa's lap. 
Santa doesn't like that. I don't either, he said. It's not right. Perhaps we can just remedy that injustice. Injustice. <laughs> he held a tiny hat in his small hand. <laughs> An offering. His fingers, more like claws tipped with talons. The color of rotting teeth waved the pointed hat at me, gesturing, offering, ordering me to take it. I snatched the hat. <laughs> I felt the felt was thick and rough under my fingers. I don't care how the felt feels. Put it on. It won't fit. Believe, <laughs> he said, and it will. Dude, just make your head smaller and the hat will fit, obviously. <laughs> When I was a boy, there was this man that lived across the street. What His the wife f- used to pummel him. So what? <laughs> he could no more defend himself against her than that. He could turn into a weather balloon and float it away. <laughs> she what? was evil, and she was he was her victim. And all of that and that was all that could be said about that. That's why I believe that those on those naughty lists can't help it. The man couldn't help being a weakling who let his wife beat him. What? And she couldn't help but turn his nose into a pulp. Okay, so I we're was... victim blaming now. <laughs> I was the way they were. But you know who suffered? Their kids. Fellas. The family dog. Is it gay <laughs> for your wife to beat you up? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Even the neighbors, I suppose, who had listened to all the screaming, Santa sent a mean little elf to cut their throats and burn down their house. Ooh, I'm so scared. Last year, the hat did, in fact, fit, and I put the elf's hand, I took the elf's hand where we ascended through the and then they made fireplace. Love. Reindeer, <laughs> yellow-eyed like the elf, carried us to customer zero, so wake up, I told him. When he did, I jumped onto his chest and wrapped my tiny hands around his okay, throat. Okay, but when does he become two feet tall? <laughs> he, he just believes. <laughs> it says believe and it will fit. Does that mean he automatically shrank to be two feet tall? I he guess. got his face smashed in? Did his <sighs> eyes turn yellow or does that oh happen over yellow time? Yellow-eyed surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Is he it? looked back at me with bulging eyes when I strangled him. I released my grip and asked him, do you know why? He coughed and looked to his sweet sleeping wife and didn't answer. Do you? Please, he began. I lashed <laughs> off to him again, and this time I finished him. Fam. <laughs> I have to admit, I felt elated about punishing him. Like I had a reason to keep my heart beating, and then my new friend gave me the list of naughty ones. Okay, okay. I set off on my own sleigh with more energy than I had since my life wife was alive. <laughs> Just because your wife died does not mean that you can turn into a little gremlin creature and strangle people. It was the best Christmas ever. <sighs> what he would sees Christ you when you're say sleeping. about this? And his list is long this year. It's divided up among Santa's yellow-eyed helpers. I've got my share, and I hope you're not on it. But if you are, well, I think this is the way our time together gives peace to the wounded and injustice to the guilty. What better Christmas present is possible than that? So, to all, good night, my grown-up boys and girls. And to those on the naughty list, I'll see you soon. Wink. I could think of a better Christmas present than being strangled to death. And how about a Lego set? That's much nicer than being strangled by some stupid man who can't get over the death of his wife and so just puts a little hat on his head and then just kills people. May I haunt your inbox? Name. No. Email. (laughs) Click to subscribe. You cannot haunt my inbox. Haunt my inbox. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Shall we reflect on the story? Okay, so... Uh, for one, I didn't sign up for a Christmas story. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't know. It's called The Naughty Ones. I thought it what? would be like, maybe they got punished for something else that's not Christmas related. Um, obviously the word naughty only... What is my phone doing? It's just like turning off and on. It's Hello. probably spazzing. It is spazzing. It's probably like, what the fuck you guys doing? <laughs> oh my god, this person has books. books. I'm sorry. How did they get them published? See, the bell is chiming in. Bell feels strongly about that one. Mm. 
Do you want to look up one? Yes, I would love Same to. website, different website. Same Short website. Covers? Okay, here you go. There's a new one. Hand me over Harrington. the child. Oh, be careful because I spent about $1,500 on this baby <laughs> and can't relate. Did your parents buy yours? No, nope, mine cost $600. <laughs> Damn. How about Green Eyed Boy? I love a good Green Eyed Boy. Watch it be like Easter themed. We're just going through holidays. <laughs> Dishing out holidays now. All right, this one is called Green Eyed Boy and it's by the same author as before. Lake. Something. Lake Lucas. Lake Lucas. That's Lake that's Lopez, it. sorry. Lake Lopez. Who wants to scare the hell this. out of us. This is copyright Lake Lopez, so <laughs> this is not like, you can't sue us. <clears throat> We're also like teenagers. <laughs> it begins. The police are across the street. Cal stood in front of the bathroom mirror, face covered in white shaving cream and an orange razor in his hand. The room was full of warm steam from the long shower he'd taken, but after his wife's statement, he'd gotten cold. What is this man's obsession with wives? Oh, wives? <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> she knocked on the door again. Did you hear what I said at the Daniels house? Mm. Yes, she said, and there are a lot of them. In other words, hurry up. He thought of the black notebook he kept in the bottom drawer of his desk. The Journal of Dead Animals. Cal what? was trembling. <laughs> what? The kitchen smelled like bacon. Okay. A plate of cooked strips was on the table, covered with paper towels that glistened with grease. Mm. Saturday breakfast, eggs, hash browns, toast, and bacon was their tradition. Julie stood at the windows, peering across the street. That's my grandma's name. He joined her. Morning, he said, giving her shoulders a squeeze. Two police cars were parked in front of the Daniels house. Another, a sleek gray color with no light bar on top, was angled in the driveway. A detective's car, he thought, mm. or the coroner. The coroner. This man's a whole detective. A hack detective. They're pretty old, he said. One of them might have passed. Oh. Are you going to check? He nodded. Where's the kiddo? <laughs> Sleeping in. Cal grabbed his... <coughs> God bless. <laughs> Cal grabbed his coat from the, <laughs> from the mudroom and exited the house. It was getting colder. The furnace needed an inspection, probably some repairs. There's ice in my fire. <laughs> Need to get that done before too long, he thought as he left the front yard. Cop cars at the neighbor's house never meant something good had happened. Well, obviously. Sorry to inform you, but <laughs> something good has happened. Oh, no. Happy birthday. Wow, you remembered? When they bought the house, the Daniels had been the first to welcome them. They'd become friendly acquaintances. Kyle's peculiarities had never pushed them away, making them true friends. He hoped everything was okay. This man is named Kyle. Uh-oh. Or is that the neighbor? The neighbor is named Kyle. Kyle's peculiarities. I don't yeah, know. Kyle's pecu peculiarities, peculiarities, like downing monsters and punching holes in the drywall. I mean, anybody named Kyle. The cop cars were black with white emblems on the door. Isn't that what they are? <coughs> Why did they make them so ominous? He stepped onto the Daniels walkway. It's to intimidate people instead of make them feel safe and protected. It's like a little skunk, but sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we think so highly of the police. <laughs> he stepped onto the Daniels walkway and saw the group on the side of the house. The Daniels, both white-haired and stooped over with age, stood next to two police officers and a man in a suit, probably the detective. They formed a semicircle around something on the ground. Cal approached, walking heavy so that they'd hear his footsteps. Everything okay? Stupid question. <laughs> Old man Daniels waved and stepped away from the circle. Cal saw the dog. Rather, he saw what was left of her. Well, shit. <laughs> she lay in a heap, blonde fur matted with a crust of blood. Parts of her internal organs lay on top of her carcass. She'd been gutted. All that remained whole was her face, and she stared into nothing, eyes vacant, dull, and dead. I mean, that's what they do. There was no Oxford comma in that sentence. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Cal said. <laughs> <laughs> Something got a hold of my dog, the old man <laughs> said. Uh-oh. Cal joined their circle, but only I for a moment. See. Black flies hovered over the dog. Corpse. Corp. It's actually a carcass. Corpses are for human bodies. Carcasses are for animal bodies. 
Well, somebody better call the police. No, oh, I Good will. thing they're already there. Oxford, comma, and carcass. <laughs> One landed on something white. A sharp piece of broken bone, maybe. Cal's stomach flip-flopped. <laughs> <laughs> you just imagine a flip-flop in his stomach? He backed away. <laughs> you hear anything last night? The detective asked. I heard the dog barking, but not like it was being hurt. One of the cops, he looked only a few years older than Kyle, said, I'm calling this one a code WTF. (laughs) If any cop said that to my face, (laughs) I I wouldn't believe that they were a cop. I wouldn't believe they graduated high school. (laughs) I'd be like, huh, what? I went through four years of cop training just to say code (laughs) WTF. I'll take it from here, officer. Please leave my house. (laughs) Kyle shoved a forkful of scrambled eggs in his mouth. He'd cover them with hot sauce and the splotches of red like watered-down blood against pale yellow egg triggered cow's gag eggs outside of the dog? Is he eating eggs while watching the dead dog? I don't know. I think Does he have a plate or does he have a fork of eggs? I think they're in Cal's house now. Ew, did you hear my throat? (laughs) I think they're in Cal's house now. Just a little fork of eggs, just in case. So what happened, Julie asked. Something killed the dog. <laughs> Julie sucked in a breath and covered her mouth. <gasps> and I oop. <laughs> in that gesture, he knew that she knew. Knew what? No way, Kyle said. What is going on? Tore it inside out, Cal said. Must have been a wild animal. I want to see. Kyle's chair groaned as he backed up from the table. Are you confused now? I'm confused. Uh, maybe they know something we don't. Who's Kyle? Is Kyle the Kyle's kid? The, Kyle's the the guy who's narrating. No, Cal's the guy narrating. Kyle's the guy narrating. Then who's Cal? Cal? Cal is the guy for, across the street. What? Yeah. Oh my god. I'll just keep trying. <clears throat> you may not, Cal said. They'd wanted a house full of children, a tribe of noisy boys and girls. That <laughs> had been the cult. plan when they bought the fixer-upper in Manito. I'm not a little boy. Kyle is the kid, Kyle oh, said. Shit. That was true. He was 12 years old, almost a teenager. Oh, not a little boy. Oh my god, so he is a real Kyle. He's going to be punching holes in the drywall in the next <laughs> chapter. <laughs> I'm old enough to see crap like that. I don't want you to, Cal said. It's nothing you want to look at, believe me. Julie put both hands on his shoulders, her protective touch keeping him in his seat. You have enough bad dreams already, honey. It's because he drinks Monster before he goes to bed. (laughs) Children had not been in their destiny. Their destiny. Their destiny. (laughs) Julie could get pregnant, but her body rejected each baby. Me too. Her womb cast them out. The pain a little worse each time. Her womb said yeet and pushed the kids out. I mean, isn't that what child's birth is? (laughs) Yes. But Kyle survived. He was their sandy-haired miracle, this handsome green-eyed boy. His name is Kyle. This handsome green-eyed boy. That's an allusion to the title, which is called Green Eyed Boy. <laughs> Cal sat down at the table. The smell of breakfast, however, made his head spin. Wow. Later, when Kyle locked himself in his room, he took Julie by the hand. He closed their bedroom door quietly so that the boy wouldn't hear. It's happening again, he said in a tight whisper. What are we going to do? Don't be ridiculous. He was home. I sat up with him for at least two hours. Kyle's the one killing the dog. No. (laughs) Of course he is. The 12-year-old that thinks he's too old for him? The the 12-year-old that's named Kyle? The shock was gone. She'd had time to find denial and lock onto it like a life preserver. Hmm. What time was that? It was around 3 to 5, she said. He wasn't roaming around the neighborhood, all right? After he'd had the bad dream? Yes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When Kyle has nightmares, bad things happen. Jesus. Is this like, uh, that one movie about the, okay, keep reading, that face you made? (laughs) In Manito, when Kyle was ten, dogs had died. Not died, been butchered. That was more like it. A poodle behind a tool shed. That's more like it. A pug on someone's porch. Both had been shredded into ribbons of meat. (laughs) I mean, isn't that just called 
ground beef. Can I get a ribbon of meat, please? <laughs> it's like those candy ribbons that sometimes your mom puts out in, like, assorted candies. So it's just meat. And as the murders went on, the neighbors had blamed Kyle. He was the weird kid on the block, the one who faced the world with an intense, silent stare. Julie described his quiet look as one of depth and creativity. He's a sensitive child, she'd say, and so very bright. Wrong. He's I a mean, gamer. He probably, like, <clears throat> ripped up his mom's uterus into little meat ribbons. <laughs> meat ribbons? Isn't that what the uterus is? Isn't that what it's like when you're on your period? Just meat ribbons? Meat. I can't say that I expel meat from my vagina when I'm on my period, <laughs> well, but... I mean, what else? I mean, you do you. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Cal thought it was just plain strange. So did the other kids, he guessed, because they stayed away, f- they stayed away from Kyle. What's up with you and wives? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like one of the crazy people in Manito. It's never been a large dog before. <laughs> so, now, so now suddenly it's not okay because it's, it's a large dog and not a poodle or a pug. Those are pretty big, though, still. If any of the kids that lived on the block were capable of sneaking out in the middle of the night and turning someone's beloved pet into a mangled pile of guts, they'd reason it was him. He would never left the house, not once after bedtime. Back then, his screams had, awakened, had awoken both of them when his night terrors overwhelmed him. The neighbors didn't believe that spooky-eyed Kyle remained tucked in his bed at night. They pictured him hunting, sneaking into their yards, a silver knife reflecting moonlight as he went about his work. The moonlight also reflected off of his can of monster that he held in his other (laughs) hand. (laughs) It's always been something small, he added. The Daniel's retriever must have weighed a hundred pounds. Whatever it is, it's getting stronger. That's just your child. It's it's called growing up. It's called chugging gamer fuel, dude. He has to... It's like... When you do a drug and you build up a tolerance to it, he has to keep drinking larger amounts of monster, and then he kills larger dogs. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, calling it. You said yourself it must have been a wild animal. You've heard the coyotes. A den of them must live close by. No coyote would torture a dog like that. But our son could do it while he was asleep? You're crazy. She headed toward the stairs. Conversation over. <laughs> It had been the Karen. beagle's death that had frenzied the neighbors. The d- that dog had died inside, and the neighbors couldn't stand the image of Kyle breaking and entering to do his killing. Had we not moved, Cal thought, they would have attacked us with torches and pitchforks, just like the scene in Shrek. Maybe they should have? I've kept a journal. His bad dreams coincide with an animal's death. I can show it to you. Well, show it to me. As his parents, it's our job to protect him, she said, just in case you didn't know that. Oh, my God. The real horror isn't that their kid is killing things. The real horror is the impending divorce that's hanging over this couple. Oh, my God. Please, I know you love him. I love him, too. Do you? Of course I do. Then shut up about the stupid journal, please. Please. The house in... (laughs) <laughs> what the fuck does that say? What? The house in Evange was smaller. With one kid rather than a tribe, a few bedrooms was all they needed. And we're back. <laughs> we had to take a break to go eat dinner. Ice cream, theory. <laughs> Mainly ice cream. Which I am not supposed to eat, but it happened anyway. So back to our lovely pal Kyle. Um, And the house in Evange being smaller. With one kid rather than a tribe, a few bedrooms was all they needed. The house needed work, but he could do most of the repairs himself. Best of all, it was next to a forest. Mm. He'd imagined taking Kyle on long walks amongst the trees. The smell of earth and trees inspiring father-son talks. Mm. But that hadn't happened. Now he told his boy, I want to talk with you about the dog across the street. It wasn't normal for a boy to spend all of Saturday in his room, was it? Well, yeah, if he's a gamer. (laughs) Boys had sports practice friends, something to lure them into the world. Wrong, boys only have Minecraft. Not Kyle. He'd emerged from his room, his eyes red from computer burn, as the sun (laughs) began to set. (laughs) Kyle looked back, his expression indifferent. What about her? Let's go for a walk, just you and me. Ooh. 
he put his romantic. he put his arm around the boy's shoulders. How does that sound? Arm around the shoulders. That's even more romantic. Yeah. Kyle looked up at him. A thin smile tugged at his lips. When you were younger, before we moved, yeah, the neighbor's dogs got creamed. It was- <laughs> Oh my god, is that what it says? Yes. Creamed. It wasn't me then and it wasn't me last night. Sorry if you don't believe me. Cream. He'd said it without a change in expression. <laughs> Anger would have been normal. The healthy kind of rage that accompanied denial when an innocent person was accused of something monstrous. Like craving. Call me crazy, but I don't think any kind of... Call me creamy. <laughs> I don't think any kind of rage is healthy. Um, I know you don't mean to do these things, Cal began, aware that his arms were shaking. Sh- arms? <laughs> Not even shoulders. his hands, just his arms are wiggling around. <laughs> the hands are perfectly still, the arms, however. I wouldn't hurt Macy. I liked that dog. Macy, remember that for the Journal of Dead Animals. (laughs) I also know that something very frightening wakes you up at night. When you have these dreams, terrible things happen. Do you realize that? Kyle's feet snapped over twigs and fallen (laughs) branches. Okay, I don't think his feet are snapping. How's that ASMR for you? The woods thickened here. A man could get turned around in these woods, especially after dark. (laughs) A man could get creamed. (laughs) (laughs) If the weather was cold enough, he could freeze to death a mile from home. It could happen to a boy, too. Only one mile? But listen, it could happen to a boy, too. Especially one unfamiliar with the woods. Oh, is he going to kill his son? Is this like a God, Isaac, Abraham thing? What? And then the dog God comes... Like, dog is a, a backwards for God. So he kills dog, and then God comes back, and he's like, "Don't kill your son." Well, we'll have to, we'll have to find out. I guess I do," he said. <laughs> Can you tell me what you dream about? No. <laughs> no, because you don't remember, or no, because you don't want to. I honestly don't know what I dream about, and I know you don't believe me. Besides, I've already talked about all of this with mom. <laughs> if you dream of. <laughs> If you dream of something vicious, something that wants to cause harm, maybe you can control it. No. Dad, Kyle said, stepping out from under him. What? Under? under? You wouldn't hurt me, would you? I mean, you wouldn't dig a hole out here and drop me in it, would you? I really didn't do anything seriously. Dad? God, no, he said, and shoved his shaking hands deep into his pockets. This bitch is going to kill his son. Don't cream him, too. <laughs> Kyle gazed at him. His green eyes shone like emeralds, and like gemstones, they showed no fear. Gemstones can't show fear because they're inanimate objects. Kyle can't show fear because he's a sociopath. <laughs> okay, good, he said. I would never hurt you, Cal said. Would you hurt me or your, or your mom? Can we go back inside now? It's getting cold. <laughs> Shit. Sure, he said. Answer my question first. Oh, never, he said. I swear. I swear. <laughs> Don't swear, because it's not nice. That's illegal. They returned to the house, father and son. Cal wondered if Kyle couldn't remember what he dreamed about. Wait, Cal wondered if... Okay, this is just shitty writing, but hold on. Cal wondered if Kyle couldn't remember what he dreamed about. <laughs> then what had he talked about with his mother? So let me translate that for you. Okay, let's record. If Kyle... Couldn't remember what he dreamed about, and what did he talk about with his mother? How do we kill dogs? The first, the year's first snow arrived later that week. It arrived, did it ring the doorbell too? (laughs) Kel worked late, waiting out the traffic, and got home late. I invited the Daniels over for dinner this Friday, she said. What are you gonna eat? And? Repentance. And with a side of cream? (laughs) (laughs) They're busy. So now they were friendless again. The heater's on the fritz, she added, changing the subject. The heat's been on and off all day. I'll look at it this weekend, he said. Maybe they all freeze in the house. Nothing died for a while, and because of that, denial came easy. Kel watched Julie dote on the boy. 
She spoke to him in sweet, hushed tones, one hand on the small of his back. (laughs) What should we get him for his birthday, she asked one night. A dog. How about a manual on how to not kill animals? Oh my god. All the years of longing for a child made her immune to him. (laughs) He's been asking for a couple of new video game. Oh my god, actually? A couple of new video game. Kyle? Are you a... He's a Visco boy? What? He's a gamer. Gamer boy. Visco boys aren't real. They don't exist. There's only one gender, and that is... Visco girl. Visco girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember which ones, though. Cal rolled onto his side. All of those games are violent. A little violence is normal for a boy his age. No. Oh. She saw nothing but beauty in his strange green eyes. There's nothing strange about having green eyes. If you have green eyes, you're beautiful. Cal worked late as often as he could and drove home long after dinner was over. He's trying to avoid his own son. Sometimes he worked until exhaustion numbed him, then spent hours awake in bed staring into the dark and listening for the bark of frightened dogs. Kyle turned 13. Oh shit, that's, that's the age when everything starts going down. He unwrapped his presents with methodical care. They'd bought him the video games he'd wanted, a couple of sweaters, new jeans, and an expensive pair of shoes. How much money do they have to be spending on this stupid I bet he got Yeezys. (laughs) I bet he did, and he's going to kill his next victims and his Yeezys. (laughs) And they'll bring them wearing the Yeezys. (laughs) The last thing they'll see is the (laughs) sole of a Yeezy stomping on their face. (laughs) Curb stomp me in your Yeezys. Do you love your presents, sweetie? Julie asked him. I do, he said, and smiled back at her, green eyes ablaze. Stop talking about the green eyes. Maybe we should have got you a puppy, Cal said. (gasps) You've always wanted a dog of your own, haven't you? The fuck? This dad is a piece of shit. He's trying to manipulate his son. Kyle looked to his mother, then shook his head. No, not since I was little. He scooped up his new belongings. Cal heard his bedroom door shut a moment later. What was the puppy comment all about? He wanted a dog at one time, that's all. You know what I'm talking about. How could you bring that up? What if you'd ruined his birthday? His dad's a bully. His dad's a piece of shit. She left him alone. Cal watched Cable in the living room, one mindless program after the other. On his way to bed, he saw a sliver of light from Kyle's door. He paused at the doorway and listened. He heard only silence. Cal opened the door. He saw Kyle kneeling on the floor. The boy wore only boxers, and his pale skin was wrapped by ribbons of shadow so thick they looked like tar. The meat ribbons. The black strips clung to his flesh, knife-like points stuck to his bony shoulder blades. What? It retreated, whatever it was, to the darkness under Kyle's bed. Cal thought it looked like a family of octopuses scurrying to their lair. (laughs) Okay, first of all... I don't think octopi can scurry. <laughs> and also, why would you compare something scary to a family of octopi? <laughs> and call it an octopus? <laughs> Octopuses. That's not scary at all. Hi, Dad. The boy turned and looked up at him, a slow smile spreading to show white teeth. Oh, I'm glad they're white. He brushed it before bed. <laughs> Cal blinked. A fluid coldness washed through him. Kyle's bedside lamp glowed in warm yellow. No monstrous shadows lurked anywhere. What's wrong, the boy asked, maintaining steady eye contact. I thought I saw something. Mom's right, you're putting in way too many hours. (laughs) Why are you on the floor? I was stretching, he said. My back was sore. You. Dude, you're 13. (laughs) He stared at the boy. The boy gazed back at him, pleasant, somehow patient. You look tired, Dad. Yeah, he said, and backed out of the room. (laughs) Jesus. The furnace gave out the first week of December, right after they'd set up the Christmas tree. Cal stayed home to fix it. Why am I getting the weirdest sense of deja vu from those two lines? He's setting up the Christmas tree. I don't get it. I don't know either. I'm scared. Enough already, Julie said. Call a professional. They'd slept under extra blankets, but Julie still caught a cold. The repairman... That's how colds work, but whatever. 
Okay, but you get a cold when you're literally cold, and that's why they call it a cold. No, you get a cold because you're inside all the time, and people's germs get on you. Why do you think they call it a cold if you don't catch it when you're getting cold? Because when it's cold, you say The repairman arrived late (laughs) afternoon. Wiring shot, the guy said. He wrote a quote that Cal barely glanced at before handing over a credit card. These people have shitloads of money, don't they? The repairman went to grab his tools, and he went upstairs to check on Julie. She had a space heater cranked on high. Crank, crank. Want some medicine? She sniffled. (laughs) Please. (laughs) Please. He poured her a cup of orange liquid. Where's the kiddo? You mean orange juice? He's in detention. Oh. Detention. So he misbehaved. That was something normal boys did. That was good. (laughs) <laughs> what? It's not good. You probably he's like not killing dogs. He probably beat up a girl though. <laughs> a girl? Yeah. His name is Kyle. Oh, you're right. And for a moment, he forgot about the cluster of shadows he'd seen clinging like a parasite to his young son's body. Really? What'd he do? I doubt that he did anything. She downed the cold medicine like a shot. He tells me that Mr. Bonner has it in for him. <laughs> Which one's Bonner? Algebra, she said. You'd know these things if you talked to him once in a while. Oh, jeez. And what are you smiling about? For God's sake, Cal, he's being punished. He sat with her until the medicine's deadening sleep took hold. It took only a few minutes. What the fuck is she what drinking? Kind of orange, what kind of high C have you been? <laughs> Intense melatonin flavor. <laughs> Cal made it home. Oh, sorry. Kyle. Kyle made it home before the repair was complete, and Cal saw something new in the boy's green eyes. Rage. I thought you were going to say red. Because <laughs> it's Christmas, you know? He's mad because they're fixing the, the heater. Probably. He let the boy slide past him. <laughs> slide? Did he cha-cha real smooth? <laughs> Watched him sulk to the stairs and ascend to his room, his hideout. He thought about following his son. For a moment, he even imagined having a fatherly talk while sitting together on the bed. Imagine that. But Kyle's slouch and sullen expression kept him downstairs. Let him calm down, he thought. Get over himself. Then we'll talk. The heat kicked in an hour later. The police are here. (laughs) On Saturday morning, Kyle stood in front of the bathroom mirror, face covered in white shaving cream and an orange razor in one hand. Can we already go over this? The room was full of warm steam from the long shower he'd taken, but after her statement, he'd gone cold. We read this shit already. She knocked again. Cal, what do they want to talk to us? Cal dressed and went downstairs. He recognized the paunchy man in the kitchen. He'd been at the Daniels' house investigating the dog's death. We met across the street, the man said. Cal eyed the fat automatic holstered on the man's hip. Why would you describe it as fat? Because it's just a whole bowl of ice cream. (laughs) I relate. I remember he joined Julie. Who could forget a thing like that? The detective says there's been a homicide, Julie said. That's a step up, isn't it? The man nodded at your son's school. (laughs) Cal said, my god. When I saw the body, I couldn't help but think it looked a lot like the dog at your neighbor's. Cal thought of the black notebook he kept in a drawer in his office, the Journal of Dead Animals. I'll need to change the title. He was trembling. Maybe shorten it to the Journal of the Dead. When is this shit gonna be over? When somebody else dies. You don't say, Cal said. I do say. The man was torn inside out. A man? Oh, it must have been the teacher. Ooh, Cal passed. Bonner? I don't know. Cal passed on the street outside. Their tires hummed against the. Oh wait, cars passed on the street outside. <laughs> Their tires hummed against the asphalt. I don't think Cal is Lightning McQueen. <laughs> so you're visiting <laughs> us? Why? Julie said. What do you suppose it is? Something evil. Cal said. What teacher was killed? Who said it was a teacher? I just uh, assumed. Assumed. <laughs> David Bonner, the detective said. Algebra. Detention. The cold fury in Kyle's bright green eyes. The detective made small talk for a long time. He asked what grade Kyle was in, when he'd be up, if he was one of Bonner's students. The cop's instinct. 
Ka Cal thought would lead him to Kyle, to all three of us. He'd have no evidence, no case to take to court, but he'd know. Just like the neighbors in Manito had known. Just like the Daniels knew. Kyle was a different kind of boy. It was clear by his disturbing, unblinking gaze. He was dangerous. May I speak with him? I wouldn't want you to upset him, Julie said. Let us break the news about his teacher first. The man's right hand moved toward his gun, and Cal thought he was going to draw and fire. It's Why would he do that? Why not? I mean, this is a nice place to put your hand. He dipped into his pocket, though, and pulled out a business card. See? Shut up, Cal. You're stupid. Sounds like a fine idea, he said. Call me when he's ready to chat. Nothing serious, just want to know if he ever saw anything unusual. Cal thought of shadows so thick they looked like strips of tar. The detective left, and Cal asked Julie, Now what? Now you make him breakfast. I still feel terrible. He dreamed of a son. He admitted this to himself for what felt like the first time in his life. He'd longed for an athletic straight-A student, one that loved to watch football games on Sundays and didn't mind his father's company. Um, this is stupid and boring, and I'm skipping it. They're, they're playing snowball fight in the yard. With his imaginary son or his real-life son? His real son. He doesn't have an imaginary son. It seems like he's imagining a son. Interesting take. Well, now his son is teaching him how to play zombie video games. Whoa, sounds like a bonding experience. Wait, what? Okay, this says... Together they gunned down zombies, breaking only to warm bowls of canned soup. The sun set early, and as darkness filled the room, Cal rose to finish his plan and murder his family. I'm not making this shit up. It says that. Is there anything else? I'm going to check on your mom. Kay, Kyle's avatar, smashed another zombie into chunks. Why don't you meet me in the kitchen and we'll dig something up for dinner? The bedroom smelled like sweat. <laughs> Interesting. Um, okay. Julie was on her back sleeping. He pulled the blankets up to her chin and kissed her fevered head. Good night, he whispered. I'll love you forever. Jesus. Then don't he ever swiped say that. her bottle of cold medicine, scanned the instructions, and went downstairs. Kyle made it to the kitchen as Cal set two glasses on the table and filled them with juice. He inhaled deep. He pushed one toward the boy. Your mom will kill me if you don't get your vitamin C, he said. Drink up. So eat all of this C. C as in kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he gulped his own juice down. Kyle did the same and Cal glanced at his watch. The boy weighed less than Julie, maybe a buck ten with his pockets full of rocks. He just had four, time the, four times the recommended dose of a do not operate heavy machinery will cause drowsiness across the counter drug. It wouldn't take long. Oh my god. Cal turned the stove's burner to ignite. The pilot kicked, ticked twice, then blue flames whooshed in a circle. He adjusted the knob, lowering the fire. Do you want to tell me why you got a detention? Oh, so that's what this is about. I didn't do anything. Your teacher's dead. I'm sure they wouldn't give him detention for killing the teacher. God. Or no, he killed him as retaliation for the detention, but the implication that, like, he got detention for killing his teacher. <laughs> That's damn. funny to me. <laughs> Kyle kept eye contact. You already know that, don't you? He shouldn't have punished me. It wasn't fair. Do you feel bad? He deserved it. So you feel nothing? Why would I feel bad if he deserved it? Dad, why? Kyle's eyes went glassy as his body registered the drug. I'm going to put you to bed, Kyle. <laughs> then I'm going to blow out the pilot light on the furnace. The house is going to fill with gas, and we're going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> I love how so explicit. This <laughs> isn't a horror story. This is just a bad story. <laughs> the headline, family killed by faulty furnace. Nobody the wiser. A tragedy. Kyle's lids fluttered closed, and his head dipped toward his chest. Dad... His head jolted up. Cal saw the panic. His eyes were round and frightened. He looked more human than he ever had. Were they green? I don't know. <laughs> I'll always love you, he said. Kyle slumped in his chair, and Cal caught him before he hit the floor. He cradled the boy in his arms, walked him to the living room, and laid him out on the couch. Cal mumbled something and opened his mouth as if to call out. 
Go to sleep, Cal said. It won't hurt, I promise. Kyle moaned, Ma! <laughs> There's like a stray Italian. cat outside. <laughs> like, a, like, like an Italian. Ma! I don't want it starting a fight with Lucy. <laughs> Cal turned to the furnace room. He was almost there when the shadows seized him. They came from all directions. Stripes as thick as tar that wrapped around his chest and torso slithered around his arms and legs, pinning him in place. Is this like a, an erotic story? <laughs> Just wait. The shadows lifted him off the floor and then they pierced through his body. Huh. They felt like shafts of ice cold air. And he yeah. knew when they retracted, they'd rip him inside out. Cal, he turned, he tried to turn in her direction, but the shadows held him tight. Is it the mom? I told you it's our job to protect him. Oh, wait, what? I'm confused. The shadows tightened. Cal gasped and tried She's to breath. The shadows. <gasps> He's just a boy and he'll learn to control it. The coils released him. He dropped to the floor and fell over backwards. The shadow tentacles <laughs> she retreated had sex into darkness. With the tentacles and their son is. No, wait. Kyle? Just like I have, she said. She also has the tentacles. He watched her go to the sleeping boy on the couch and stick her finger in his mouth. <laughs> the boy gagged. <laughs> she positioned his head so that he spat up juice and cold medicine on the floor. Help me get him upstairs, she said. The poor boy's exhausted. That's the end. Jesus. I feel like we just wasted time. When your mom is... A secret hentai monster. Oh, stop. <laughs> this was written in 2010. Octopuses. <laughs> and they have their own writing blog. Oh my god. Someone's going X Games mode outside. <laughs> Is their name Kyle? <laughs> They're named Kyle. Shall we reflect on that one? All right. All right. First, right off the bat, it was a shite story. <laughs> shite. Shite. Erzählung. I just learned that word. Erzählung. Erzählung. It's solid. Like to hear. Right. Er- Should we get a little more reflection in on this story? What I noticed that was very. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Literarily exciting. Literarily. <laughs> Literarily exciting. Um, I don't know if this is actually true or just an accident of writing, but what I noticed was that as the story went on, mm-hmm. Cal referred to his son less and less as Kyle and more as the boy, which would be interesting, hmm. but you know, he's still calling him a boy, so you can't say that he's like, oh, my son isn't human, but he's like... Maybe he's trying to say, oh, this isn't my son anymore. Hmm. I think Cal was the real villain of that story. Cal, I would agree with you. Why does he say he loves his family members when he is about to kill them? Because that's something you say to make the act of killing your whole family feel better. Does it? Yeah, it pardons the whole act of killing your family. Like, oh, I'm sorry. In advance, I just wanted you to know (laughs) that I love you and I'm going to blow up the house. Yeah, so just chill. Also, it was interesting that he said it was going to be a furnace, a faulty furnace, but he did it on the stove. Oh, uh, maybe. So riddle me stove. that, Lake Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Like, I don't know. Like, yoinks. <laughs> <laughs> Look for this on your podcast place. Actually, our podcast place, when we find it. <laughs> or we can just put it on YouTube. But hey, if you're listening to this, that means you found our five pounds. So then it's yeah, yours. if you found this, great job for finding our podcast place. And we really appreciate it. <laughs> thank, thank you. This happened very impulsively, and who knows if it'll happen again. I feel like we should have some kind of quirky goodbye. Um, we'll figure that out later when we become popular. <laughs> When, In other if. words, not at all. All right, so peace out. Um, but for now, goodbye.